guys, welcome back. This is Captain Orlando Muñiz with Nomad Fishing Chargers. And today, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about one of the most important tools on any fishing boat, which is your gaffs. Stay tuned. There are many different types of gaffs. And we use gaffs on the boat anywhere from two inches up to about six inches. And I'm gonna show you some of those today and what their uses are. There, we carry a lot of different gaffs on the boat, but our go-to gaffs, and the one we use probably 90, 95% of the time, are these fiberglass gaffs. These have the smaller two-inch hook. This one here is a Winthrop style, which is very effective, very sharp. So we carry these in both seven and eight foot. The seven gets most of the action. We use this from kingfish to school size dolphin and everything else, okay? They're also fiberglass, which means they're very lightweight and I can reach over the side with one hand while I'm leadering a fish and gaff the fish. The next gaff we use is an aluminum. This is an AFCO gaff with a three inch hook, but it's, it's a lot more sturdy. It's about, this one's about a six foot gaff, but you can see here, the hook on this one is a lot stronger and it's a lot less likely to straighten with a larger fish. We would use this like on a slammer type mahi, a big cobia, maybe a big bottom fish, uh, anything of that sort, maybe a, a swordfish or something like, to that effect. This one here is the largest gaff we carry on the boat. It's also an AFCO aluminum, aluminum gaff. This one's six foot and it's got a four inch hook. This one gets the least amount of action because we would only use this on either a large swordfish, which we don't do a lot of sword fishing on this boat. So swordfish, maybe a really large cobia, really large bottom fish, maybe to handle a shark or something of that nature. This is what we would use. Something like this is less likely to snap or have the hook straightened on it. It's also got a nice big wide gap that'll help you get those bigger fish. Now, one of the disadvantages of the fiberglass gaffs is that when you lift a large fish especially if you do not lift straight up and down they could snap I've had them snap right here before even though it's quite rare uh, they can over time you know become weakened so you want to be careful when and you know in what situation you use this gaff when it comes to gaffs there are several things you need to remember first of all gaffs need to be in a place where you can they are readily accessible I like to keep them right on the side of the console right here I actually keep one on either side that way whenever I need it it's here and ready to use within seconds okay I don't have to go dig for it uh, I've been on boats where the rods are kept underneath a bunch of equipment that's not the right thing the right thing is to have it accessible and to have it ready to go when you're using a fiberglass rod these rods are intended to lift vertically so what you want to do and they're very flexible what you want to do is when you gaff a fish you want to lift straight up and over the side you, you do not want to try to lift like you would on a fishing rod because number one the fish is going to come off the gaff or the gaff can in some cases snap so you don't want to do that you always want to gaff the fish you want to reach out over the water you want to reach out over the water gaff the fish and keep them coming towards you and lift straight up like so and right into the fish box if you've got a fish like a cobia or a big dolphin you might want to have your fish box open like i have here and then you want to come right into the fish box so that fish can't hurt anybody on the boat or jump out of the boat or damage anything on the boat once you've been fighting a fish for a couple minutes and you kind of have an idea what it is that's when you should start thinking about which gaff you're going to use. Is it a kingfish? Maybe it's 20 pounds or less. Then you want to go with the fiberglass. If you have a larger fish, maybe a big cobia in the spring or a big mahi, big slammer mahi, maybe a 50, 60 pound wahoo, then you may want it to go to the aluminum gaff or maybe two uh, fiberglass gaff which we've done in the past. So each case is individual. So you have to make the judgment based on the gaffs you have on the boat. One of the things you have to keep in mind when you're gaffing a fish is that the person on the rod and the person who's gaffing need to work in harmony and they need to communicate. In other words, if 
the person on the rod has a fish that's going right, they need to pre pre prepare to shuffle their feet and move towards the right. They always want to follow the fish. And you as the gaff man should be following them and anticipating which way that fish is going to go so that you're in the correct position when that fish finally gives you a shot. The last thing I'd like to mention is that when your gaffs are stored, especially if they're stored under the gunnels, you want to have some type of cover. I use a piece of, of hose to cover the points because these gaffs are sharp and if you're running around the boat trying to get a fish in the boat, you do not want to get stuck with that. So this is a great you know, way to protect the tip and to protect yourself. Well guys, there you have it. Hopefully these tricks and techniques will help you put more fish in the boat on your next fishing trip. Until next time, this is Captain Orlando Muniz with Nomad Fishing.